Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today I'm just going to do a quick roundup here on the storm system that came in February 3rd. It lasted the 4th, 5th, and 6th. Brought some very heavy rainfall across the entire state of California. Some very high winds, some nice mountain snows as well. And we had a very prolonged rain event across Southern California, as you may know. We'll look at some of those totals. But first, we're starting off here with the infrared satellite imagery. You can see as this was beginning to bring some of the heavier rainfall into the Bay Area and the Central Coast. You can see the Atmospheric River extended all the way back past the Hawaiian Islands Classic, Atmospheric River, Pineapple Express. And these are two-hour chunks we're going to be scrolling through here. And you can see the development of this mid-latitude cyclone, very unusual low-pressure system. I think it was a sub-80 millibar low. And again, you can see how the Atmospheric River just set up perfectly over Southern California. And by this time here, we had a very damaging windstorm moving up across the state. 77 miles per hour at San Francisco. We'll check some of the other wind speeds here as well. This is very dynamic. Low pressure center just came up and basically sat over Northern California for a bit. And we got this elongation of the entire trough continuing to bring that deep moisture back up into Southern California for this very prolonged rainfall event, somewhere up towards probably 72 hours if we broke it all down. And then you can see how it just continued on and on. And then once the atmospheric river, the bulk of it pushed through, we still had this convection going to the upper level low and this cold air moving back in behind it that continued some of this rainfall all the way on in through the 6th of February here into the evening hours and it continued on even to that night as well before this finally pushed off. Now, I'll show you here on the radar, this only covers about 24 hours of that 72-hour event. So this is right at the end of the loop I've created here. This goes from the 4th, February 4th through the February 5th. And you can kind of see it eventually first hitting Santa Barbara and Oxnard here. And this is the Doppler here for Orange County. So it doesn't really show just how heavy the precip was. I'm just kind of giving you a little taste of what the Doppler radar was doing for these three days. This very intense rainfall event across Southern California. And as you can see this is just a 24 hour clip here and it's still going and then it finally wraps up there so anyway let's bounce back here to the infrared satellite imagery and we'll look at the air mass one as well and you can clearly see the greens here that's that uh, trop tropical and subtropical air mass moving up into southern california and again if i click through here these are two hour intervals and you can see the developed well developed mid-latitude cyclone there with a very powerful pressure gradient be, it was almost the all-time high, I believe, between Los Angeles and San Francisco. It was pretty close to it, and the winds really reflected reflected that across the state as well. And, and again, with the atmospheric river just kind of continuing to pour right over Southern uh, California and eventually moving off as we went on into the very early morning hours of you know, uh, February 7th. And this is another look at the Doppler radar here. And you can see the Bay Area here. You can see the Atmospheric River just training over the same area across Los Angeles County. Initially, it was Santa Barbara and Ventura County. And if we look onto the next round here, again, this is just kind of continuation of that Atmospheric River just pouring into Southern California. So, and then this is the last one here. And you can kind of see the convection in the upper level of spinning across Southern California as we pushed on to the very early morning hours of February 7th. Now, I wanted to show you this here because back on January 23rd, I was actually talking about the storm system. We almost picked this up probably almost a full two weeks in advance. And I actually picked it up a couple days before that. I'll show you the next video. But we, I was talking about this here. And you can see the European on, on this day had a 971 millibar low. It really wasn't that far off. When you're looking 12 days out, it's very good. Uh, I mean, the models just did really exceptionally, exceptionally well. And one of the reasons why I bring this up is because we have a similar scenario unfolding here and the confidence is increasing in a very active weather period coming up as we go over the next week to 10 days. And that's what we're going to be highlighting here in tomorrow's briefing as well. I'll give you a little bit of taste of that here at the end of the video also. And this goes all the way back to January 20th here. And we were talking about this jet extension coming across the Pacific Ocean, perhaps that El Nino enhanced storm track. And indeed it was. So a very good model performance there. And, you know, not bragging too much or anything, but it was pretty nice to pick that up too weeks in advance. It's kind of amazing. And this is the seven-day rainfall totals as of February 8th, about 12 p.m. here. And you can see just some ridiculous amounts across Southern California, including Oxnard and Santa Barbara and the Los Angeles City area. Got some record rainfall amounts as well. And you can see lesser amounts across some of the valley areas, but up the coast towards the Bay Area, some big rainfall amounts also. And if we look closely here, you can see across the higher terrain, once you get to the purple, that is 15 inches of precipitation. Some of this may have been falling as snow across some of 
with a higher train at times as well. But look at once you hit that white, that is 20 inches of liquid equivalent, just an amazing amount of rainfall. And if this is what's really notable here. The pink is 10 plus inches and you can see the widespread swath of it, including the Los Angeles Metro and some of Orange County here as well in Santa Barbara and Ventura County. And I mean, eight inches is an incredible amount of rainfall. And you can see just this wide area that that covers. Five inches would be in red virtually almost most of you know, Southern California was five plus inches, a lot of four plus inch areas as well. And this is looking at the cocoa rod. So you can see every single red dot you see here was 8.6 or higher. So very impressive rainfall totals all across the state. And if you want to become a cocoa rod weather observer, C O C O R A H S. You know, go onto the internet, search that up, and you can actually take observations and send them in here. And it's nice to have. Uh, taking a look at the winds also. So I wanted to point this out. I didn't highlight any kind of crazy ridgetop winds or super high mountains where nobody lives. These are major population areas and a very potent windstorm. San Francisco tops the list at 77. You can see Monterey checking in at 63. Marysville, 68. Oroville, 70. Uh, Oakland, 50, Oakland, 61, actually. You can see San Jose at 59. Salinas at 60. Santa Maria all the way down the coast there towards 60 as well. Uh, yeah, pretty impressive wind gusts. I mean, entire across the entire state. And there was some wind gusts in excess of 100 miles per hour across some of the higher terrain as well. But this was a very dynamic windstorm, one of the strongest windstorms I've ever seen hit the entire state of California. And this could challenge for San Francisco's greatest windstorm because you see February 4th, here we go, 77 miles per hour. That is the highest wind gust ever recorded at the airport. We also hit 77 in the big one last year also, March 14th, 2023. That had four hours of gusting 50 knots or greater. This storm had five hours gusting 50 knots or greater. So very close battle here if you were going to break it down and try to determine which one was the greatest ever. And maybe we could go back in history and try to find something that would match it. But I brought up a other couple notable events here, December 12th, 1995. And that really impacted a lot of the Pacific Northwest as well as that huge low pressure moved up the coastline. And you can see the Columbus Day storm, the great one back in 1962, which clipped San Francisco as well, checking in with 62 miles per hour. And there was also four deaths because of actual, let me back that up here. So there was four deaths because of the wind damage here on the storm on February 4th. There was three back in March 14th, 2023 that were directly wind related. So pretty close on that aspect as well. Uh, looking at the five-day snow total here, we did get some nice snowfall across some of the higher terrain this year in Nevada and Southern California, Northern California. And I mean, it may have underperformed for some areas out there, but there's still some of the higher elevations were getting up over four or five feet. And we did do a pretty good job catching up at least somewhat on the snow water equivalent. Here we're looking at the actual current snow water equivalent, uh, April 1st as of normal. And you can see we still have some work to do here. So, you know, that's... We actually need some more storms here to get the snowpack back up to normal for what it's supposed to be at this time of year. And going down a little bit further south, you can see a lot of areas, you know, right around 40%, not doing too great. A few areas up towards 50, 60% as well. But yeah, we definitely need more snow across a higher terrain, even with all the precipitation we've got recently here. And this is positive snow depth change in inches. So you can see some areas got some pretty big amounts. I don't know if that's a an actual... Uh, official report there, that 165. But you can see some areas got up for six feet. There's some areas up over three, four feet out there as well. So again, we, we did add some nice snowball here, but we still have a ways to go. As far as the reservoirs are concerned, virtually every single reservoir is at or above historical average. I don't know what's up with the San Luis one here. I, I, I don't know exactly what's going on with that. I, sh I could look into it further, but I, but I didn't. I forgot to for this video. But you can see that virtually every other reservoir is at or above historical historical average. So check out Lake Orville here. It's it doing quite well. You can see the green line here is uh, 1977 through 78. They put up some other notable years on here as well. The 1982 and 83, the great El Nino there, you can see it hit the, the peak there right about June 1st of 1983. And you can see it almost topped out the reservoir right there. And we're doing not bad. We're above the historical average, which is this light blue line here. So so far, so good with the Orville. But look at Lake Shasta. I think we are at, for this time of year, this is the fullest Lake Shasta has been in recorded history. Again, looking at 82 and 83 is the green line. So we are above that for the Lake Shasta Reservoir there. Very nice. And again, the blue here is the historical average. And the blue line across the top is the total reservoir capacity. 
Um, now, taking a look at what is coming here. So I brought up that that I had talked about this previously, looking out, you know, 12, 14 days in advance and kind of getting a good some good model agreement. And that's what's lining up again. And you can see we're still nine, 10 days away from some of this activity, but the signal is just as strong as last time. And you can clearly see the experimental product on the Weather Prediction Center here is definitely bullish on the upcoming active storm pattern. You can clearly see the high encompasses much of California, moderate the rest of it and slight also. And if we look at snow, I mean, look at that. And I'm unusual to see that high there for risk of heavy snow going through the extended as well. And that's a good news here for the Sierra Nevada and Northern California as well. And heck, why not? Like I said earlier, moderate. This is risk of high winds. Firstly, bullseye in the entire state of California. So we're going to look at this again tomorrow. You know, we're going to keep breaking this down the daily briefings. That's kind of the good thing about being able to do these uh, daily briefings here is because we can kind of find the pattern and see the ebb and flow and see if things start backing off or if they start ramping up. And once we get closer, then we can start sounding alarms and, you know, get everybody prepared for what may be incoming here. And it'll be interesting to see just how much we can dry out some of the soils. Things are just incredibly saturated right now. And I don't know that a week is going to be enough to really dry out to the extent that we would need to be able to survive some more extreme atmospheric river activity uh, without causing some pretty dynamic mud flows, debris flows, landslides. You guys know the drill, the rock slides as well. Uh, there's been so many of them, especially across Southern California, that I, I don't even know. I, I know there's hundreds. I've seen the reports of them being over 300. Some expensive homes have been damaged. Some hill slides were coming down. Roads have been blocked. It's just been wild out there. So I don't know if that week is going to be long enough. Hopefully it at least brings some relief where we can dry out a bit here before this next round of storms, which is starting to look more and more likely rolls in here. So yeah, anyway, uh, it's eight to 14 day precipitation. This keeps trending upwards as well. This now goes out through February 22nd, just a clear bullseye here across the, some of the Southwest in California and the six to 10 day, a couple days ago, you know, they had the dry out here, but now that we're getting closer to this time period, they have definitely been increasing here. The probability of being above average across some of the Southwest. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little roundup here. Just that I put that out so you can kind of maybe just look back and think of some things. Leave some comments below on what you saw during this storm, what you thought of it, what you experienced. If you're out there measuring rainfall, if you have a weather station on your house, what kind of wind gusts did you get? And uh, what else? Yeah, but we'll just continue to break things down day by day because winter is most definitely not over here in the state of California. So we need to take advantage of this break. Hopefully things dry out enough before that next round of storms gets going across the Pacific Ocean. Um, but anyway, I'll do my normal briefing tomorrow. Hope to see you guys then and I will talk to you guys later.